I'm Mayor Fofo Gillich. Welcome to our Biloxi. The word Biloxi means first people in Native American language. The city that bears the Native American moniker certainly lives up to a people striving to be foremost. The territory of Mississippi experienced three waves of European exploration and colonization in its early history. Beginning with the Spanish and Hernando de Soto's trek across the region in the 1540s, the coastal Mississippi that would become Biloxi did not experience permanent European settlement until 1699, when French explorers sailing for King Louis XIV landed on an island in the Mississippi Sound. Pierre Lemoyne Sur de Iberville and his brother Jean-Baptiste Lemoyne de Bienville, who were seeking the mouth of the Mississippi River, named it Ship Island. It had a natural deep water harbor that their ships easily anchored in. When these French explorers landed ashore near present-day Deer Island, just south of Biloxi, they claimed the entire region for France, as the Spanish had not yet established any permanent settlement on the Mississippi coast. The French built Fort Maurepas just across from Biloxi in present-day Ocean Springs to secure their holding, a region where Native Americans such as the Biloxi and Choctaw lived or engaged in trade of the plentiful marine resources. These Europeans secured the Gulf Coast by establishing Biloxi as the first capital of this territory in 1699. Later, the French capital would shift eastward to Mobile in 1702, then finally westward to New Orleans in 1718. The Mississippi Territory became an official part of the new United States in 1798, after a brief revolt of coastal citizens under the Republic of West Florida, Mississippi became a state on December 10, 1817, becoming the 20th state of the new country. On the Mississippi Gulf Coast, a rich ethnic blending created a unique culture different from the planter hegemony that had begun to dominate the hinterland and Mississippi River regions of the state. On the coast and in Biloxi, Spanish, French, English, Irish, African, and Native American peoples exchanged goods through a growing shipbuilding industry. One economic endeavor that early defined Biloxi was the tourist trade that resulted in its growth. So much so that officials charted the city in 1838. As early as the 1840s, the Magnolia Hotel welcomed visitors mostly from New Orleans. The city became a destination of people fleeing the heat of that city and the yellow fever pestilence that threatened the health of the entire Southland. Biloxi was known for its salubrious climate and hospitality services. Many summer homes appeared on the Mississippi Sound shoreline as people spent their summers taking in the Gulf breezes, enjoying fresh seafood and the social events of the coast. With a new lighthouse in 1848 guiding ships to Biloxi, the city grew. In April 1861, the American Civil War opened with a volley of cannon shot from the Confederate States of America on Fort Sumter, South Carolina. The Mississippi coast became embroiled in the four-year conflict, first because the United States government instituted a naval blockade of all coastal regions of the South, and secondly because Ship Island again became an important harbor. The Union forces planned to launch attacks against Pascagoula, past Christian, Biloxi, and ultimately New Orleans from its forces stationed at Ship Island. When the American Civil War ended in 1865, the Mississippi coast and Biloxi did not have the physical damage that other areas of the state endured. The tourist trade recovered quickly as Southerners sought normalcy. The Lewis and Nashville Railroad connected New Orleans and Mobile with Biloxi in 1872. Biloxi again capitalized on its maritime and tourist trade. Biloxi entrepreneurs Lazaro Lopez, William K. M. Ducate, 
James Maycock, William Garnflow, and F.W. Elmer created the first seafood processing factory in Biloxi in 1881, capitalizing on the abundant oyster beds and shrimp in the Mississippi Sound. Beautiful white-winged Biloxi schooners harvested the bountiful seafood of the Sound. The Biloxi schooner became synonymous with success. Several waves of laborers joined the local citizens in harvesting seafood as the industry expanded to meet the demand for succulent oysters and shrimp. Bohemians or Polish workers from Baltimore, Maryland, familiar with the oyster industry, first manned the labor lines, with Louisiana Cajuns and Croatians soon following. Biloxi African-American workers often work side by side with the other pickers and shuckers. But in some factories, they worked on separate lines because of racial prejudices of the times. By the early 1900s, Biloxi was known as the seafood capital of the world. Through the decades, the industry ebbed and flowed with the economy. By the 1970s, Vietnamese immigrants arrived in Biloxi from their war-torn land. Working in the seafood factories and building boats the Vietnamese became a part of the cultural fabric of the city. Today, many events highlight all of the immigrants' contributions to Biloxi venues, food and entertainment. A visitor can enjoy good Cajun gumbo, witness a Vietnamese New Year celebration, eat pucheradas or fried plantains with cream, or attend a fado dough, all part of the rich offerings of Biloxi. As the seafood industry developed throughout the 20th century, so did the shipbuilding aspect of the seafood trade. Biloxi schooners once graced the waters, while family names such as Kovacevic, Ross, and Fountain became famous with the art of boat building. As technology overcame sail power, Biloxi luggers with their low riding profile and gasoline engines soon replaced the schooner. Along with new technologies in shipbuilding, Biloxi also witnessed the growth of Kiesler Air Force Base in early 1941. On donated land from the city, the United States Army created a technical training school named after 2nd Lieutenant Samuel R. Kiesler, Jr., a Mississippian killed in World War I. This facility has grown into one of the largest training bases in the United States, particularly in its state-of-the-art medical facilities. It also is home to the Hurricane Hunters, a squadron that flies into the storms to gauge strength and development. In 1992, dockside gambling became legal in Biloxi. Gambling was historically a part of the coastal history as the Isla Capri in the early 20th century symbolized. In the 1990s, gambling establishments first located on small paddlewheel riverboat type watercraft, but today the industry displays modern multi-storied buildings with all of the amenities. As a result of the gambling industry, Biloxi has experienced a renaissance of development. Even after Hurricane Katrina struck the Mississippi coast in 2005 and destroyed much of the gambling establishments, progress has been phenomenal. The Biloxi Public School District has invested $80 million in new schools and upgrades in the past 15 years. The Washington Post highlighted the outstanding curriculum offered by the school district when it declared that Biloxi High School was a top school in preparing students for college. The rebuilding effort after Hurricane Katrina also witnessed the construction of a new Biloxi Visitor Center the MGM Stadium where the Biloxi Shuckers play baseball along with collegiate teams, a new Biloxi Public Library and numerous hotels welcoming guests to Biloxi. Historic preservation continues to be important as developers renovated the White House Hotel, once an establishment that welcomed visitors in the early 20th century into a modern destination point. Six million visitors come to Biloxi annually since Hurricane Katrina to partake of its amenities. Along Highway 90, new seafood restaurants serve local seafood and highlight the cuisine of the coast. 
As the 21st century unfolds, Biloxi is primed for further development while retaining its rich history and cultural attractions. Shrimp boats bring in their catch, just as they did over a hundred years ago. The blessing of the fleet still occurs every June, and po'boys are still recognized as one of the favorite foods of the city. Now explore the coast and see what Biloxi has to offer. This program is made possible in part by the Mississippi Humanities Council through grants from the Mississippi Development Authority and the National Endowment for the Humanities. Additional funding was provided by the Biloxi Chamber of Commerce, a division of the Mississippi Gulf Coast Chamber of Commerce.